check it out. It's an Amstrad NC100. Oh, hey everyone, it's the Amstrad NC100. Alan Sugar's baby. This has got a Z80 CPU inside of it and it runs BBC Basic as well. It's quite cool, probably the most retro hipster laptop I think I've ever seen and owned with multiple coloured different keys. And uh, yeah, well why don't we just go ahead and take this apart, show you how it works. So back when I was young and enthusiastic and studying for electronics and radio communications at Plymouth University, I persuaded my parents to get me this laptop to help me with my coursework. Was it a good decision? So the multicolored buttons that you can see here are used in conjunction with the big yellow function button to choose between word processing, spreadsheet and diary functions. Now when I got this off of eBay for about £20 and it first arrived in the post I saw the screen had what looked like a big scratch down the front of it. Obviously this made me quite nervous. I thought perhaps I'd been sold a bad un. Anyway the great news is it's quite clearly the plastic protective cover that's got the scratch on it. So we peeled away that plastic protective cover, put some batteries in it and press the on button to see what happens. So great news, the display turns on but it tells us that the uh, lithium ion battery requires replacing. So hopefully this will be an easy fix. The lithium battery is a memory backup battery. It's a CR2032 style battery and it's located on the rear of the unit. So there's nothing complicated about this process. You can use a coin or your fingernail to open that little rotating enclosure and pop the battery out. Now we'll take a closer look at this battery in a moment, but before we do that, let's put a new battery in there. So in goes a new CR2032 battery and we'll go ahead and close that lid up with my thumbnail. Ouch, as you can see, probably better off using a coin. Now. Taking a closer look at that battery, you can see that it's swollen and that it's actually got a little bit of uh, battery acid starting to leak out of the sides of it. So I think we caught that just in time. Great news. So let's fire it up. Ah, lithium battery is still low. Please switch off and replace the battery. So on the right hand side you can see there there's a little contrast wheel, we've adjusted that and we've had another go at turning it on and off. Weirdly, the third time we did it, everything fired up. Now I wonder if this might be related to a capacitor, but we can see here now we've got the word processor, calculator, diary and clock and address book and all of that kind of good stuff starting to work. So the keyboard on this is absolutely magnificent. It feels lovely. It's a proper old school keyboard. It's not too clacky. It's damped nicely. And it does exactly what it says on the tin. So there are a few shortcuts here, as you can see, that you can use with the yellow function button and also the control button. And those are listed on the bottom of the display there. So on the rear of the unit, We've got a DC power input port, obviously the on off switch, a speaker, a serial port or RS232 port, a parallel port for an old school printer, and everything is nice and ergonomic. And then on the right hand side is the battery pack. On the left hand side of the unit, there is an extra card slot socket. And then on the right hand side of the unit, is that contrast wheel as I mentioned earlier. The unit is very light and very easy to carry around and it's run by four AA batteries. So as you can see here then the external input voltage is about um, 6 volts at 300 milliamps 
and uh, there are a few warning labels on the back of the unit just telling you that that lithium battery can be a bit of a problem if you were to put it in a fire. So don't go chucking your lithium batteries in a fire. So time to pull this bad boy apart. Let's get all the batteries out of it and let's get all the screws open and take as many things off as we possibly can. What I neglected to do here was put a cloth down. Now I'd taken that uh, a screen protector off uh, to stop the screen from getting scratched. Good news, I didn't scratch the screen. Underneath that little protector is the Amstrad ROM. Let's go ahead and pull all of those screws out of the laptop and then see if we can break it apart. So this is quite easy. We've got a plastic bottom and then the PCB is nicely screened with some folded steel. And the display is attached to the PCB via a ribbon cable and the speaker is also mounted in the display as well. So a little bit of careful coaxing and we've got that ribbon cable which appears to be slightly skewed anyway and that speaker cable removed from its connectors on the PCB. Now the display itself is actually made by Citizen. And these are quite common displays. And I've seen quite a lot of them around in the past. And they use the Oki, OKI chipset. Again, Japanese. So there's the ribbon cable and the speaker. And that's one little self-contained module. That's the top or the front of the unit. And there's a power button here as well. When you press the switch in, there's a receptacle that then presses the contact button on the PCB. And there's that power switch. So let's just turn this around and then you can have a look through my glasses and uh, we'll get into this PCB in a little bit more detail. <laughs> so these modifications that you can see here on IC313 and uh, IC311, those are standard across all of the uh, all of these NC100s. There was obviously some kind of a fault at some point in the past uh, that required uh, that required some tweaking. There's the uh, the little contrast wheel, and um, you can see the other side of the uh, of the ROM there, which is a 256k ROM chip, which is uh, mounted to face the bottom side of the case. Now those are the keyboard connectors that you can see there. As I said, that's a lovely little keyboard. And then over here we've got the Zilog a Z80 a CPU. Now uh, this is a 6 megahertz version of the uh, Zilog a Z80 CPU. So uh, that's a little QFP quad flat pack chip which is a cracking little piece of kit. Now underneath that tab there, that large chip, is a custom chip that's manufactured by NEC and uh, that there takes care of uh, memory management, keyboard and does all of the I.O. stuff. Quite a lot of connections on that bad boy. Now these two chips here, IC305 and a 304, those are the two 32 kilobyte 8 bit CMOS chips. So they hold the 64 kilobytes of RAM that this unit can manipulate. And the little CR2032 battery that you saw there keeps those RAM chips charged so that you don't lose 
your work. Underneath the folded metal work here, you can see a few a little individual components, but uh, there's nothing major there. So I don't think there's any point in pulling all of that lot apart. So there appears to be nothing horribly wrong with this unit. It all looks like it's working quite well. So perhaps now's a good time to reassemble everything and uh, perhaps I could start writing my memoirs. Okay, just going to quickly give things a bit of a service and clean up these battery contacts with a cotton bud and uh, then we'll reset the time and date, make sure everything's uh, set to how it should be and then I think it would be good fun to have a quick play around with the BBC Basic and see if we can't write ourselves a very a simple and quick program. So you enable BBC Basic by pressing Ctrl and B for Basic, at which point you have the ability to code directly into the memory of the computer. And uh, the computer actually stores, uh, you can save these programs inside the internal memory of the computer. So let's have a look. Look at that. Hello world. <laughs> BBC Basic works. Anyway, as always, thanks ever so much for watching Dubious Engineering. I hope you've enjoyed the little guided tour of the Amstrad Notebook Computer NC100. Please don't hesitate to give us a good old thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. Maybe click the bell if you haven't already. And um, go ahead and, uh, and leave a comment. I wonder what kind of battery powered laptops you may have had a play around with in the past. I wonder if anybody had something like a, a Scion. Do you remember the Scions? Anyway, give us a little comment below and um, look forward to hearing from you. I always try to make sure that I reply to all the comments that are put on, the, uh, are put on my videos. I always enjoy chatting with you guys and thanks ever so much for watching. Take care, have a wonderful weekend and a wonderful week. And we'll see you again soon. Cheers and beers. Okay, so as we're out and about here, just want to show you something. Uh, these are called cramp balls. And uh, a little fungus, Prince, Prince Albert, King Albert. Let's see if we can get one of these off. There we go. And what you can use these for Oops, sorry about that. And what you can use these for is lighting fire. Maybe I'll get an opportunity to show you how in the near future. Okay, so here on the Nature Channel, <laughs> and uh, we've come across what are called wild ramsons. Wild garbage. And stinging nettles, apparently. <laughs> Bugger. Um, yeah, so, ow, and brambles. <laughs> um, anyway. Uh, Vicky loves to make pancakes with this stuff, so although it looks like she's uh, got a doggy poo bag with her, she's not. She's out finding wild garlic.